All right, everyone, now let's go ahead and get to our question one. So enough with cards. Let me calculate confidence intervals. Halloween's approaching, so I have a bag of candy. So I have, uh, so my total is equal to, I have five Reese's plus seven Twix plus eight Snickers plus three, th yeah, three Sour Straws. So that's going to be equal to what? 12, 20, 23. Um, what is the probability that I pull a candy that is chocolate or Reese's? So these are not mutually exclusive events because Reese's is a chocolate. Um, so we need probability of A, B, which is equal to probability of, oops, actually, excuse me, A plus, oops, plus probability of B minus probability of A that a condition can occur that satisfies both of those, the union, uh, the basically union of those. Um, anyways, probability that I pull a chocolate, a, a, a candy that is chocolate. So that is going to be equal to basically 20 over 23 plus the probability that I pull a Reese's, which is going to be five out of 23 minus the probability that I pull basically, uh, so that is chocolate or Reese's. So what satisfies both of those conditions? Minus five over 23. So that would just leave me with this. So there we go. We got it. Nice. Um, what is the probability of the kind of this chocolate or sour straw? So now that is not mutually exclusive. So probability of A plus probability of B. So probability is chocolate is 20 out of 23. Probability that sour straw is three out of 23. So that's 100% probability, which makes sense. Fantastic. Um, now, our Bayes theorem. Let's get ready to Bayes it. So we have, oh, remember our total is equal to 23. So we have the following scenario. Trick or treaters grabbed a candy without me looking, pulled out two, uh, and pulled out two Reese's. Um, what is the probability that the first candy pulled out was also Reese's? Um, so let's see. So pull the grab candy and then pulled out two Reese's. So what is the probability that the candy first pulled was also Reese's? So we have the following scenario. So we need to invoke our Bayes theorem, which is luckily right here. So we are looking in this scenario we have event A, and then possibilities that B is a Reese's, that B, the first candy, was a Sour Straw, and then B was a Twix. Um, or B was a uh, Sour, B was a Snickers. So those are the possibilities. A is uh, basically the A event that is a given is that we have we pulled, yeah, excuse me. Oh no, I'm gonna have to reconnect just quickly. There we go. Hopefully that brings me back to life. It's alive. So these are our four other scenarios here. Let's make sure, there we go. And A is two Reese's were pulled. So if I look back at these lecture notes here, so we need to look at the probability, probability that we pull a Reese's given that A has occurred is equal to the probability of our B event, probability of B Reese's times probability of A given that we pulled a Reese's let me divide it by probability, same thing, probability Reese's times probability of A given that we pull the Reese's plus probability B of sour times probability of given that it, I pulled the sour that A occurs plus probability of Twix times probability of A given that B that it was a Twix. And then finally, last one, plus probability that we have, uh, we have B of Snickers 
given that probability of A occurs given that B SNCC has occurred. All right, whew. So, first of all, what is the probability that we pull a Reese's? Well, that's just going to be the same that we had previously, which is going to be 5 out of 23. The probability that we pull a sour is going to be 3 out of 23. The probability that we pull um, a Twix is going to be equal to 7 over 23. And the probability that we pull a Snickers is going to be equal to Snickers, 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 8 out of 23. So that's what we've got for those probabilities here. And we're just going to plug them into our equation. Now, the probability that event A happens given that we pull the Reese's. So we pull the Reese's. So now the first kid pulled the Reese's. So now I only have four Reese's left. Oops. Four Reese's left, and there's only 22 in my total because one is gone. So now, that's the probability that the next... So I pull the Reese's, that's the probability that I pull another Reese's, and then another one over here. Now the probability of A, given that my B of sour, given A, and the A event again is I pull two more Reese's. So I pull the sour, okay, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> so that doesn't affect my number of Reese's. So that's the probability after I pull the sour that I pull a Reese and then the next one is just going to be, because I, again, that I've successfully pulled a Reese out and then it's just going to be this. And this is going to be equal to the probability of A given that B is a Twix is equal to the same value here and the probability of A occurring given that B was a Snickers. There we go. We got it. So, fantastic. Now, and you can plug in and do the math out on that one, um, but we're just looking at that now. Now we're asked for our three data sets, um, which contain UTS measurements and MPA, what is our confidence intervals? So, let's go ahead. For my confidence intervals, I'm gonna do um, t.test, and I'm gonna do bracket, bracket, ds1, bracket, bracket, 2. And I'm going to do mu equals 0, doesn't matter. My conf.level equals 0.9. And I'm going to do, uh, actually, I'm going to do alternative. I'm going to do 2.sided. So I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to do this for all of these. So I can go bang, two, three, and then I'm going to do so let's do the one, the first one's three, so then 95. 95, oops, 95, 99, 99, 99. So we can do this right now. So I can do shift enter. You see that interval, this interval, this interval, and you can slow down. Yep. And we got it. So, that's for that one. About a 57 and 25 confidence interval? Well, I can just, I'm gonna go ahead and do that for each data set. What is it, 55 and 27? 57 and 25, excuse me. So let's do 0 0.57. and 0.57. So we can do that here. Here, here, 57% confidence interval, and then 
We can do that here, here, here. Excellent. So that is problem one. So good luck, and we'll get through the rest of the problems right now. See you then.